So getting started with Netbird is actually quite easy. First, go to netbird.io and on the homepage, we're gonna click get started for free. And then what we're gonna have to do is create an account. We support a variety of single sign-on providers that you could go ahead and use. And with multi-factor authentication enabled on any of these providers, it will work with Netbird requiring a second form of authentication when you sign into your Netbird account. For my example in this video, I'm gonna continue with a Google account. And when you sign on to Netbird for the first time, you're gonna get this welcome message asking if you're gonna be using this for business business or personal use. For now, I'm going to say this is a business use. Let's say we have a small team just above five. And where did we hear about Netbird? Let's say we heard about this from YouTube. And how do we plan on using it? We're going to do zero trust, employee remote access, and site to site connectivity. So from there, we could click on continue. And now here, there are two main ways to get started with Netbird, whether that be creating a direct mesh peer to peer network, or setting up remote network access. In this example, we're gonna go with remote network access. What this is going to do is allow us to install a Netbird agent on a peer, and then from anywhere in the world, we could connect to that agent and access the internal network or internal subnet that that peer is located on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, and we have a few things we could do to get started. We can give access to a single internal IP address, an entire subnet, or a specific internal domain that you may have set up. And I will note, just because you select something here doesn't mean you can't add things, change things, or do whatever you want later, including setting up peer-to-peer -peer networks. This is merely to help you get started. And for this case, we're gonna get started with an entire subnet. So I'm gonna select that and then input the IP address of the subnet I am going to be gaining access to. Depending on your subnet, it may be 24, it may be 32, but for me, I have it set up as 24. So now we could go ahead and create that resource. So our first step is to install the Netbird agent on a peer that is within this subnet. And we have some steps over here to help us get started with that. The very first thing we're gonna to want to do is generate a setup key. The first setup key we generate here is going to be a one-off key, meaning it can only be used one time. And we'll dive a little bit more into that once we get everything set up and we're logged into our dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate setup key and you can see the setup key that we have generated there. Now I don't have Netbird installed on the peer that I plan on doing this on, so I'm gonna click on install routing peer. From here, we have some options. We can install this on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, or Docker to get started real easy. For this test, I'm gonna be doing this on a Ubuntu VM I have. So I'm gonna select Linux and then we could go ahead and copy the single line command which will get Netbird installed for us. I'm gonna open up our terminal here. I already SSH'd into the machine that is on that local network within that subnet that you can see right there. And I'm just gonna drop in this one line command to get Netbird installed. So with the command in our terminal, I'm just gonna hit enter, type in our sudo password, and then it's going to begin the installation process, installing all the necessary packages, scripts, and system services. And once it's complete, it'll look a little something like this. You can see that the service is started and we have the option to run the Netbird up command. Luckily for us in this onboarding process, we have a netbird up command right here that we can just copy and paste with the setup key that we generated. So I'm gonna give that a copy, go back to our terminal and paste it on in. By default, the host name is going to be routing peer. I'm gonna change this real quick for my use case. I will probably set up additional routing peers in the future. So this is going to be my Ubuntu VM peer. So let's hit enter and then we'll connect. And just like that, you could see it's connected and you may have noticed that the onboarding has shifted to a new page. We have the peer there, but now it's waiting for an additional device to connect. And for that, it's gonna be the local machine that we're currently running on, which is just my Mac mini desktop computer. So if I go over here and click install Netbird, we have a variety of options here, again, including Linux, but we can install the client directly on Windows, Mac OS, or even iOS or Android. The Netbird client is how your self, your employees, your contractors, whoever you want to give Net Netbird access to will interact with the platform. So I'm gonna download this real quick for Apple Silicon. And just like that, you can see it downloaded. Now opening the client installer, at least on Mac OS, will look a little something like this. It's a pretty straightforward process. You could change the installation location if you'd like to. If I go ahead and click install and then type in my administrator password, it will install the packages, configure all the scripts and do everything it needs to do. And just like that, you can see that the installation was successful. So if I close that out, move it to the trash, you'll notice right up here, there is a Netbird icon. If I go ahead and click on that and then click connect, it will again prompt us with a single sign-on. So I'm gonna connect with the same Google account that I've been using. So I'm gonna click right here. And here I'm gonna authorize the app. So let's click accept. And then we can see the login is successful. So if I close this out, go up here, you could see that we are successfully connected. And over here on the onboarding dashboard, you could see I have a successful connection between the peer, my local machine, 
and it can access the subnet there. So in order to test to see if this is working, what we could do is run a ping on a different network. So what I'm gonna do real quick is head over here and I'm gonna actually switch to a different network that's not on that same subnet. So I'll just connect to my phone's hotspot to test this out. And then with that connected, we can go to our terminal again and I'm gonna to go to a local terminal so we can ping our remote server. So if I type in ping and then an IP address on that subnet, you can see we have a successful connection. So I could go over here, say it works. And now we have a little page on rules. By default, going through the onboarding process, it will automatically create a set of policies so you can access that subnet. And you can see over here, the connection is still good. But if I go ahead and disable this policy and then head back over here, you could see that we have a timeout. So the policy is no longer effective. We don't have access. But if we re-enable this policy, head back over here, you could see the connection again is successful. So let's go ahead and hit continue. And you can see, congratulations, we have completed the onboarding. There's some videos here that I do recommend you check out. But for now, let's go to the dashboard and see what we've actually done. So in our dashboard, it dropped us into my first network. This is the network we created during onboarding. And you could see here, we have my subnet with that IP address we added, as well as the routing peer that we created. This routing peer is the device that it's using to access everything else on that subnet. And here you can enable disable routing peers, enable disable resources, add new resources, and even edit the entire network. For example, if I wanted to edit the name and description, I could do that here as well. Another thing we did was generate a setup key. So if I head over to setup keys, you could see this one right here. This is my first network routing peer setup key. It's red because it was a one off key and it's already been used. And if you want to set up more machines, maybe enable high availability mode, you would want to create a setup key, install the peer on a separate machine, just like we did, and add that as a routing peer to the network. Additionally, under access control, it did create a few default policies, which we kind of saw. We have users to the routing peers, which allows users to access that specific routing peer device, so I could connect to it directly with peer-to-peer -peer if I want to. And then we have users to my subnet, so you can see all the users here can access that entire subnet. So for example, on the peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, if I head up here and go to peers, we could see we have two peers. We have the Mac mini, which is this local device I'm currently on. And then we have that Ubuntu VM peer. Here you can also access the Netbird IP addresses. So if I give this a copy and let's close out this ping request. And then if I try to ping the Netbird IP address directly, just like that, hit enter, you can see we have connection. But if I head over here, go to policies, and then disable the users to the routing peer device directly and disable users to my subnet, you can see we have a request timeout. Re-enable those, we have connection again. And that's just a brief overview of policies. There's really a lot you could do with this. If you start adding additional users, you can add them to different groups. For example, if you only wanted IT admins to access your routing peers, you could add that IT admins group, save the changes, and then head over to your team users and i only have one user which is myself the owner but i can add myself to the it admins group save that group head over to peers and you can see the it admins group was already added to this device since it is my device it's automatically associated so that means i will continue having access to that and again this is just a brief kind of getting started overview i do recommend you check out the documentation on policies networks network routes and so much more because for example in networks if i go to my first network if you didn't want a specific user to access the entire subnet you could add an additional resource for example media server and then set this to a very specific ip address for a user to access and then for the destination group we could create a new one such as media and then add that resource and then from there, we can very easily add a policy. And you could see it automatically filled in the destination as media. And then we can add the groups of IT admins and users being able to access that resource. And of course, you can select sp specific ports if you'd like to. If you have a certain service running on a certain port, you can allow those ports or even port ranges. And then we could go ahead and enable posture checks, which these are awesome, as it adds a whole nother security layer, allowing you to ensure people have a specific operating system, they're from a specific location, or even running a process on their computer such as an antivirus. And then from there we have the name, so this is media server policy, that looks good, so let's add that policy. So now if we go back to policies, I could change the users to my subnet to only be the IT administrators, save those changes, and now 
IT admins can access just about everything, but if you're a user, you really only have access to that media server IP address. So that is our brief getting started. I do recommend you check out the documentation, other videos we have on this channel, and go ahead and get started with Netbird today.